Hey, CFS, man, what is good, y'all? Man, my name is Gabe, and I get to serve here as one of the student directors, specifically at the Doral campus. Shout out to my homie G's over there. But man, I uh, hope you guys are doing well tonight. We, I always say this, I personally, and we want to thank you for joining us, whether it's your first time, or maybe you haven't come in a while. We want to thank you for joining us. You could be doing anything. I always say this, you could be doing anything on a Friday night, but you decide to come tonight to worship God, to open up God's word, and to work on your relationship with God. So I just want to thank you for joining us. But man, if it's your first time, we've been in this series called Into the Deep. That's how it looks right there, into the deep. And what we're talking about, man, sharing the good news of Jesus, right? Sharing the good news of Jesus, man. Expressing to others your love, the love that you have for Jesus and what Jesus has done in your life and how that is, it really, it's a blessing to share the gospel. You know, uh, Rob, I mean, Lewis kicked things off in the first week and Lewis talked about, man, uh, man, sharing the gospel is a blessing to others because of the uh, impact that it has with that person. Then second week, Robert talked about how we share the gospel with not only people that we expect, but people that are unexpected, right? That, that the unexpectedly, they share their story. They share what they're going through. And right there and then, man, share the gospel with that person. Under, uh, you tell them about the love that you find in your relationship with God. But this week, today, tonight, we're going to be talking about something a little bit different and something that might be a little bit difficult when it comes to sharing the good news. We're going to be talking about sharing the good news of Christ with our families and with the people that we love, that we consider even family. And so before we even do that, before we get into the scripture, I wanna share with you guys a story of one of my friends, his name's Anthony Bacelio. As a matter of fact, take a look. This is my, this is my, my one of my homie G's at Doral. Anthony Bacelio, man, he is a man right now pursuing the Lord. He's a photographer and matter of fact, I think that's actually his camera. He took a picture with that, with his own camera. And, um, and man, he's a great guy. If you don't know him, get to know him. He actually takes a lot of pictures for our church as a whole. And so if y'all see the, the great quality pictures, shout out to him because he takes a lot of those pictures. But anyways, a man, Anthony Bacerio, uh, he his story, his testimony is impactful. I asked him if he could share his story today. He said yes. And so uh, his story is very impactful when it comes to sharing the good news and sharing the gospel because, you know, he was raised in a Christian school. And as he was raised in a Christian school, he, he you know, he heard about uh, who God is. He heard about, you know, their stories in, in the Bible. And he heard about these things, but he really never truly believed. It was until one of his friends was actually one of my friends too, Andres Ledon. He invited him to a church service, to a Christ fellowship service. And he sat down, he heard the gospel again. But that day, that morning, is when he really, really, truly believed in his heart and confessed his sins. And he believed that Jesus Christ is Lord and his savior of his life. And from that morning, it completely changed the direction of his life. He decided that everything that he did, everything that he does and everything that he will do, he will bring glory to God and not to himself. He decided to humble himself and to live a, a life pleasing to God. And I love his story, but a big part of his story is what had happened after he gave his life to Christ. Because after the gospel had, had come and after he received the gospel and after he took steps, he started serving in ministry. He started to uh, be in small group. He decided to do all these things. But one thing that he had placed on his shoulders, a burden on his shoulders, was to share the gospel with the people that he loves. Because he saw the impact that the gospel had on him and he wanted the same thing to happen to the people that he loves. But there was one person in his story, in his testimony, that stands out to me the most because I was with him through it. And that person was his dad. You see, Anthony Bacerio, uh, man, he has a very uh, intense and amazing relationship with his pops, but his pops didn't know the Lord like how he did. And after he gave his life to Christ, immediately right after, he decided that he wanted to uh, place the burden to share the gospel, but not only to share the gospel, but to live out the gospel in his home so that one day, his dad would see Jesus for who he is. And in the, in, in, throughout times of difficult conversations that you know, Anthony and I had and, and prayer, we would pray together for his dad. And he actually had conversations with his pops and his pops was you know, struggling and, and trying to understand the faith that Anthony had in Jesus. There was one Saturday afternoon, I remember clearly that there was one Saturday afternoon that Anthony had, had, had texted uh, me and some of, uh, 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 some of the rest of the group of boys that his dad was going to finally come to church. His dad openly expressed that, hey, I wanna to come to church with you tomorrow. And so him and his pops came to church that Sunday 
And the same way that God had transformed Anthony in that one service, God transformed his pops as well through the message of the gospel. And immediately right after that, I love this portion of the story because immediately right after that, a month or two, I forgot when exactly it was, but it was right after where the pops decided to get baptized. As a matter of fact, we have a picture. Anthony, his own son, baptized his pops. And man, now, that he, now he, his, his own dad is now reflecting Jesus in his workplace, in his life, and Anthony's doing the same in his life. And what I love about this story is that, man, at the end of the day, Anthony, because of the, the power of the gospel and how it transformed his life, he placed the same power and he, he, he put it as a burden to share, the, with, to share the message of the gospel with the people that he loves, including his pops. And as I'm mentioning all this, you might be thinking of a person, you might be thinking of maybe even people in your family, in your life, and people that you truly love that don't have a relationship with God. And you know, and you feel it. It's a burden on your shoulder. It's a burden that you want to share that same message so that God would enter into their lives and they would see the goodness of God throughout this life. And as I'm mentioning all this, you know, you might have been reflecting in the past two weeks how God has been gracious to you, how God has demonstrated his love for you, and you just want the same for that person. Whether it's a mom, whether it's pops, whether it's a brother, a sister, an uncle, an aunt, a grandparent, even a best friend that you consider them family. Like, you know what? You, I know you're, my, you're not blood, but you're, you're basically my brother. You're basically my sister. And you've had a relationship for a long time. But man, you want to see them in heaven one day. You want to spend the rest of not only this life, but the rest of eternity with that person because you truly love them. And you want to just share the gospel, but you might be struggling with something. See, just as Anthony's story is, is amazing and it's, and it's beautiful in, in the totality of it, Anthony struggled as well. He struggled with having the conversation with his own pops. He had questions that he needed to answer to his father. He also understood that there was a discipline of prayer that was required for him for his relationship with his dad, to pray for his father, that God would uh, remove the, 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 the blindfold and, and that he would see the light of Christ. He prayed, he had to discipline himself in prayer for his dad. So it wasn't easy peasy. He, had to, he was struggling, he was uh, groaning in pain for his father so that one day his dad would come to the faith. In the same way, both you and I have people in our lives. But the real question is, and this is what we're going to answer today through Scripture, is, man, how is it that I share the gospel with my family, with my family member, with a loved one? Because I have, I have a fear. I have a fear of rejection. I have a fear that they might forsake our relationship, that they might forsake, that now I'm lonely because of it. They might see me a different way. They might treat me a different way. Man, I have a fear. How do I do this and how do I share the message of the gospel with my family? Well, we're going to be answering that question through Scripture, but let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. So right where you are, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. God, thank you for, uh, God, for each and every person who is listening, whether they're online or whether they're out of campus. God, thank you for the message of the gospel that, that you sent your son to demonstrate your love for us, that while we were still sinners, you loved us. And God, I, I thank you that we get to have a genuine relationship with you, a personal and intimate relationship with you. But God, right now I pray. I pray for whoever that person is that's on our students' mind, that whoever's on my mind, God, that we would right now, after this message, that we would continue to not only pray for that person, but God, to, to continue to speak to that person about the gospel, to live out the gospel in our homes. So that one day, God, we are praying in faith that one day that salvation would come in their lives and they would, they would have the same thing that we do, a genuine relationship with Jesus. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we worship you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. Well, if you guys have your Bibles, we're going to be reading from, chap uh, from Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. And Paul here is writing, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If not, it's going to be on the screen. This is what he says about evangelizing, sharing the gospel. He says, for I am not ashamed. Someone say ashamed. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. 
to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I love verse 17 because he says, for in it, for in not being ashamed of the gospel, for sharing the gospel, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is, rich, as, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. I love that passage that, man, we are called to not be ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is from faith that we get to have the message of the gospel that we believe in this, and it is for faith, so that people would come to the faith. That is why uh, we have the gospel. Now, if you, guys, if you guys are writing down notes, you can write this down as your main idea for today, because you might be wondering, well, how can I share my faith with my family? How can I share my faith with my mom, with my pops? How can I do this? Well, you write this down as your main idea. Let faith overcome your fear. Let faith overcome your fear. Let's look back. It says, do not be ashamed of the gospel. When you are ashamed of something, it's because you are afraid of something. You, you are afraid of something that might, something might happen. And here it says, man, don't let shame, man, take over your life. He says, man, be in, man, have a, a great sense of faith. Walk in faith. Live by faith when it comes to sharing the gospel. Now, the first thing you must do when it comes to living by faith, right, this is your first point, is you must remind yourself of the impact of the gospel. Remind yourself of the impact of the gospel. As a matter of fact, Anthony, when I, when I spoke to Anthony, one of the things that he, that, said, that he said that encouraged him to share his faith with his pops was that he reminded himself of what the gospel did in his own life. And just the reminder of that encouraged him to share the gospel with his dad. And so when we remind ourselves of the impact that the gospel had on you, whether you were dealing with an addiction, whether you were dealing with, um, you were struggling with seeking purity, maybe you were, you were just dealing with a life and a life rebellion to God, you didn't want anything from God, and because you heard that Jesus loved you so much that he sacrificed himself so that you would live in righteousness and you would not live in unrighteousness, that because of that, it impacted you and you walked away from the addiction, you walked away from rebellion, because of that, you started walking by faith. If you remind yourself of that, it'll encourage you, it'll inspire you to do the same when it comes to sharing the message of the gospel. But not only reminding yourself of the impact of the gospel, of, 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 how, it had, of how it was on you, but also remind yourself of the impact that it might have on the other person. You see, Anthony, in the same way, was also thinking about how the gospel can transform his pops. In the same way, you must think about how the gospel can transform your aunt, how it can transform your uncle, it can transform your person, the person that's on your mind. And so we see that, man, when it comes to sharing the faith, sharing the faith that we have placed in Jesus, it's not only about reminding ourselves of the impact of the gospel in our personal lives, but how the gospel can transform and impact them. Now, the second thing that we must do when it comes to sharing the faith, sharing our faith, uh, to our family members, to our family, our loved ones, is that we must, write this down as your second point, speak and live out the gospel at home. Speak and live out the gospel at home. You know, I shared the story of Anthony, uh, but now I'm gonna share with you guys a biblical story. It's found in Acts chapter 16. And Paul here, uh, he is going to uh, the, the city of Philippi and he is approached by a group of women and they start worshiping God together. They start praying with another. And he preaches the gospel. He shares the gospel with these women. And the gospel penetrates the heart of someone named Lydia. So we're taking, uh, we're going to be reading uh, verses 14 through 15. Look at what happens right after uh, the, uh, this woman named Lydia. She hears the gospel. She's, look at what happens in verse 14. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple, go of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. So the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. I love verse 15. And after she was baptized and her household as well. And she urged us and, and said, if you have judged me uh, to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. See, what I love about this story is that right after she heard the message of the gospel, Lydia decides to go straight home to share the gospel with her family. The, or, you know, her own family responds to the gospel open, the, the, her, their hearts are opened and they get baptized right after. And I love that because in scripture, we see that 
uh, throughout scripture, God has commanded us to go and share the gospel to make disciples of all nations, and that includes our home. And so we should not only remind ourselves of the impact that, that the gospel has had on us, but also speak to them. You know, take the step of, uh, of courage, take the step of bonus and speak to our families about the message of the gospel. But one thing is not just about speaking, it's about also living it out. Because Anthony, in his story, he shared the gospel, he shared that he found forgiveness in Christ. But it wasn't just the words that he spoke, it was also the way he was with his father. As a matter of fact, if you ask him, he would tell you that what really motivated his father to come to church and what really motivated the questions that, the, uh, that his father had asked him was because he saw there was a change in character, a change in personality, a change in his attitude. And because of that, he started asking questions. Because of that, he, started, he was intrigued with the faith that Anthony had because he saw there was a change in the way that, uh, he was a, there was a change in the way that Anthony lived a change in his lifestyle because God, the gospel transforms not only the words that you say, but it transforms your lifestyle. So speak and live out the gospel at your home. Remind yourself of the gospel and the impact that it has, but also speak truth and live out truth at your home. And the third thing, the last thing that I want for you guys to write down when it comes to sharing the gospel with your family is that we must be persistent in our prayers for the gospel. We must be persistent in our prayers for the gospel. Look at what Paul says to the church of uh, Colossae in, in chapter four, verses two, two through four. He's actually in prison. And this is what he says. He says, I'm going to continue steadfastly in prayer. I'm being watchful in it with thanksgiving. And at the same time, I want for you to pray also for us. Listen to, what, listen to what Paul says, that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. He is, he is in prison because of the faith that he had placed in God. Verse four, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. I love this passage because Paul's emphasizing that man, I'm going to continue to pray for those people who God, is, who God is placing in my life, that God would open a door to reveal the mystery of Christ. What is that mystery? The, the mystery is really truly faith. A lot of people don't understand what faith is. A lot of people don't understand, you know, how can I come to know who Jesus is? And it's just by, by believing in who God is in scripture, by believing in the mystery of Christ, that God died for you and that he resurrected for you. He asked, he prayed unto the Lord that God would open a door that the mystery of Christ would, re would be revealed for the gospel. So it's being consistent, being uh, persevering and being persistent in your prayer for the gospel. Now, you know, one thing that's discouraging for us as children of God is at the end of the day, when it comes to sharing the gospel, a lot of the times, man, we're gonna have rejection. We're gonna, we're gonna feel as if, man, people are rejecting me. I'm sharing the gospel with this person. I'm sharing the gospel with my aunt. And man, they're not, they, they don't believe in what, on what I'm saying. They're not believing in what I'm saying. Well, I want for you guys to write this down and understand this. That if they are not believing in what you are saying, understand that they are not rejecting you, but that they are rejecting the gospel. They are not rejecting you. They are rejecting the gospel. They are rejecting the message. So don't take it personal. Because if you take it personal, you're going to give up on that person. You're not going to love on that person the way God has called you to love on that person. You're not going to pray for that person anymore if you take it personal. You must understand they are rejecting the gospel, but just in the same way that God has not given up on you, God is not gonna give up on that person as well. And so therefore you should not give up on that person. You continue to show love. You continue to uh, remind yourself of the impact. You continue to speak to that person. You continue to show love in, that, in those hard times. Do not give on that person because they have rejected the message of the gospel. Be persistent in your prayer. Continue to pray for that person. You know, my mom always told me this. You know, when it comes to loved ones, when it comes to family members, she always told me, uh, you know, Gabe, if you truly love them, 
wouldn't you want to spend the rest of your life with them? You know, when they die, when you die, wouldn't you want to be in heaven with them? And I love this quote because it's so true. It says, but still, the greatest way you can love your family is by sharing and reflecting the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. That is the greatest way you can love on your family. Not just by sharing the gospel, but reflecting it in your house. By having conversations, by forgiving your parents when they've done something wrong to you. By asking for forgiveness when you've done something wrong to them. By not holding a grudge. By being a light in your school and when they see that you are different, they're gonna ask questions. And you share the gospel with, that, with, with your mom, with your pops, with your cousin. Sharing and reflecting the gospel, why? That is the best way you can love on that person. How is it the best way that you can love on that person? Because you're not only caring for their temporal life, you're caring for their eternity. You're caring for their, for their relationship with God. And that's the most important thing. Remind yourself of the gospel, the impact of the gospel, speak to them about it, reflect, live, live by faith, don't be, over, don't be overwhelmed by fear, but overcome fear by faith. I love that. And the three, points that we, the three points that we've written down, if you realize, you know, the first point was remind yourself of the impact of the gospel. When you remind yourself of that, you remind yourself of the faith that came, that was one, that, uh, that came into your life. The time where there was a service, the first time they heard the gospel, faith came into your life, the spirit came into your life and you place your faith in Jesus, speaking and living out the gospel, man, you are walking by faith. You are living by faith. And when you are persistent in your prayers, man, when you're praying to God, that is the biggest act of faith. All these things point back to being and walking and living by faith. Don't be overcome by fear. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. Let God do what he can do in your family. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, God, thank you for your message. And uh, God, just thank you for this sacrifice of your son, the message of the gospel. Now we take it for granted sometimes, the forgiveness that uh, we constantly ask for. And God, you continuously to, to forgive us. You continuously forgive us. You give us life. You give us breath in our lungs. And God, we take it for granted. But God, in the same way that you have changed our lives and transformed our lives, I pray right now that not only for myself, but everyone, for everyone who is listening, that we will take a step of boldness to take, and take a step of courage to share the gospel with that person in our minds. Whoever it might be, give us the boldness, give us the courage, strengthen us, comfort us in times of anxiety, comfort us in times of discomfort, comfort us in times that we might not feel as bold, that we might not feel as if we have the words. Give us the words so that in the same way that you have changed our lives, that you would change theirs as well. Lord, we thank you, we love you, we exalt you, and we worship you. In Jesus' precious name that we pray, amen and amen. Well, CF students, man, we love you, I love you, and man, we won't see you next week because next week is Ministry Rally, and so if you're interested in volunteering, man, come through Ministry Rally uh, next week at 6 p.m., but we'll see you the following weekend back at our campuses. See y'all, God bless you guys, deuces. Thank you.